Some people take the straight path in life. But at Arizona State University, we respect your twists and turns. They make our online students more driven to excel in their professional lives. That's why our personalized suite of services empowers you with innovative resources and staff that sticks with you. Make your next turn with one of our 300-plus programs at ASU, a top 10 university for online bachelor's programs. Tap to learn more or visit us at asuonline.asu.edu. So, Michelle. So. There is an election coming up. We're about, what, you know, a week away from going in and getting our democracy sausage. Well, not everyone because over a million people have already pre-polled. I know. Isn't that amazing? Because I'm pretty sure no one cares. <laughs> that is one. Get it out of the way. Just get it out of the way. Do you get a sausage if you pre poll? No, I mean, there's no democracy sausage. Do you know the interesting stats behind the democracy sausage? Tell me an interesting stat about democracy sausages. Do you know that a WA Premier was campaigning and he was handing out free sausages? And people thought that it was bribery and it went to court and yeah. it was found that it was not bribery, <laughs> hence the democracy sausage. <laughs> So they took him to court. Well, they basically over said over a Bunnings bribe. Yes, basically. Essentially a Bunnings bribe. And then everyone said, "No, this is about democracy, no. hence the democracy sausage." And I found that really fascinating. Anyway, sideline. I tell my American friends that you know when we vote, we get a sausage, and they're like, "What? That's crazy!" It's like, no, it's great. We try being vegetarian. It's really shit. yeah. You got to get some, yeah. You get a falafel roll or something. No, I basically just get onions in bread. Anyway, go. What I wanted to talk about today was, yes. and it, it, funnily enough, this started out as going, "Oh, this could be a really big thing to talk about." Mm. It's popped up. The Labor the party have been attacking one Gladys Liu. Yes. Right, the member for Chisholm. She holds it on a razor-thin margin of 0.1%. Mm. Right. But there is intimation that she's involved with the Chinese government. Dun, dun, dun. Yes. So I want to talk about that and cool. everything Chinese. Okay, let's get stuck in. You're listening to I Spy, the Pinot Gris of Australian intelligence. Oh, very nice on the nose. Sounds like you're smoking a bomb. I know it does, but I'm doing, I'm doing my wine taste. Um, it's very, very safe. Notes of weed? Yeah, notes of, that's the other Paul Simon. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to I Spied. My name's Michelle Stevenson. I'm here with David Callan. And we're going to talk, we're going to dip into politics slightly with Gladys Liu and kind of her uh, semi-involvement, I guess, with the Chinese government. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's actually a really interesting story about Gladys Liu because it all goes back to a guy by the name of Nick Zhao. Yes. Now, Nick Zhao, he was actually a car dealer, a Chinese guy in Melbourne, a car dealer who went to ASIO and said, I've had a Chinese businessman approach me with a million dollars to run for parliament. Amazing. Right. I'm going to give you a million bucks and you're going to run for parliament. Yep. Now, ASIO have said, yeah, we've looked at that and that was it. That's all our good mate Burjo mm. said. He actually made a public statement about around about 2019. He went, yeah, yeah, we know about it. Shut up. Channel 9, 60 Minutes, did a mm. big expose on it. Gladys Liu was then brought in because there are photos of Nick Zhao at a Liberal Party meeting with Gladys Liu. So everyone suddenly went, oh my God, Gladys Liu, mm. she must be involved with the Chinese government. Now, the thing that really made this one become the big story yep. was Nick Zhao was found dead in a hotel room in Melbourne. Oh. Yeah. After he'd went and talked to Asia, obviously he, he wouldn't have been found dead before he went no, to Asia. No, that wouldn't work. So it had been revealed that he'd spoken to Asia. This story came out on sixty minutes, and then suddenly he's dead in a hotel mm. room. Uh, yes, and for the interest of the podcast, and because you wouldn't do it, I sat down and read the coroner's report on his death. Okay, and what did we find out we in your deep little cave of sadness? <laughs> It's very sad in my deep little game. Yes. That's what we found out. No, here's the interesting thing. It really smells like this guy was assassinated, doesn't it? It's just like, ooh. But he wasn't. No, he wasn't. According to, uh, according to the coroner, what we didn't know about Nick Zhao was Nick Zhao was going through some problems with fraud. Right. He, through his car dealership, had fraudulently created receipts to say that he'd sold certain mm -hmm. a certain number of cars. So he got about $1.5 million worth of bonuses. And this had been going on for a while. He, he owed a lot of money. Then, right. And he was about to go to court. Yep. And he'd said to his wife that, look, I, I've, I need a couple of days in a hotel before I go to court because I'm really worried about this and I just need to get my head straight. And they went through his phone records. He did FaceTimed his wife that night, all this sort of thing. Mm. But essentially they said it was a suicide. Um, he was found with a gut load of antidepressants, which basically it's the same sort of thing that killed Heath Ledger, you know, the thing that restricts you or depresses your respiratory system. Yeah, and, you're high and you're low. And he's dead. Yep. Right, so they found him dead. But the thing is, Gladys Liu 
is now been dragged into this whole thing of the whole Chinese intelligence service and trying to infiltrate parliament. And what's really interesting about it was the big thing, the big claim they made about Gladys Liu mm. is she has links to what's known as the United Front Work Department. Which is what? Right. Here we go. Let's have a quick little lesson on how the Chinese intelligence service works. Would you like to start? Oh, my God. I can't wait. All right. Strap it in. Right. Remember when we had Ferg on, we were talking about what it was like for him in China. We were talking about the Ministry of State Security, right? Very much like the KGB, based on the KGB, Mm. essentially. And their whole job is to basically not only extract intelligence, but to keep an eye on people when they're in China. And they're fronted. I love this. The front for the Ministry of State Security is... The China Institute of Contemporary International Relations. This sounds like a Monty Python skit. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> right? So, essentially, Chinese intelligence is Monty Python, yep. but really, really, they're not laughing. It's not funny. No. Right? So, you've got the Ministry of State Security, and then you have the Ministry of Public Security. So, they're a bit like ASIO. Do we have Ministry of Silly Walks? That's all I want to know. <laughs> Later on, I can do that for you. <laughs> I've practised. Right. So, the Ministry for Public Security is very much like China's ASIO. They yep. basically stay in there and keep an eye on stuff. And that is going to get to what we want to talk about later on. Yes. Which is- Foreign espionage. Paul Simon. Yes. Right. An Australian not, perspective. Yes. Not the, not the musician, the other guy. No, I know. I like It's so funny when you Google Paul Simon, you're like, oh. <laughs> wow. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was very good. Diamonds on the soles good. of his I shoes. Know. And he's the head of ASIS. It's cool. It's so random. Wow. Yeah. Uh, all right. Then there's the PLA, the People's Liberation Army. Mm. They do all the military stuff. And within that, they have the Strategic Support Force, which is their cyber division. And then you have the – this is a really good one – the International Liaison Department. Okay. They specifically focus on politicians. So they are looking at foreign politicians and seeing how they can compromise them. But in here, there is one little department that no one has, right? Mm. No one has one of these. No other country in the world has one of these. And it's called the United Front Work Department. Now, the United Front Work Department works within the diaspora of China. Okay. Like, in every country, like every big city in the world, there is a Chinatown. There's always a Chinatown. There's always a Chinatown. And always. You know, the dumplings are great. Now, the whole thing is the diaspora's moved out, but the Chinese government, the current communist government, like to use the diaspora as a source of intelligence mm. and also a way of seeding themselves into intelligence positions, right? So through through Yamcha, through Yamcha, <laughs> chicken's feet, and here's a gun. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like a mango pancake. And Everyone like, but the mango pancake is really an Australian thing. It is. Yeah, I know. You won't get it anywhere. Else. Uh, you won't get it anywhere. <laughs> no, I reckon if you went over to Shanghai and asked, you'd probably get slapped. Also, there's no mango, real mango in it, and there's no real cream in it. It's it's completely fake. Anyway, it is as you were. Well, thank you very much. We've just it's essentially it's the crispy cream of yum cha. Yeah, it is totally, yeah, totally. I'm here for it though. Right. Well, we all are. Now, the whole thing is mm. this comes out. The interesting point about this is that it's Nick Zhao and it's it's Gladys Liu and all this. Every time you read about a Chinese attempt at espionage in Australia, mm. it involves a Chinese businessman. Of course. There's always a Chinese businessman. Always. Involved, right? And what's, this is an interesting thing. You think thing. maybe they would learn to like be a bit more clever about yeah. it? Like now that it's always a Chinese businessman, maybe don't have a Chinese yeah, businessman. Yeah, a Chinese comedian. What about a gardener? Yeah, a Chinese gardener. Because they don't have contacts and a Chinese gardener that walks up to you and goes, do you want a million bucks to run for parliament? <laughs> it's going to look a little sus. Then again, yeah, it's true. A, yeah, a Chinese businessman doing the same thing. I know. I'm like, I feel like we've seen this movie before. We mm. need a different, we need a plot twist. That's all I'm saying. Well, that's a really interesting thing because mm. that brings us to what is a very rare occurrence is Paul Simon, as we said, the head of ISIS. Yeah. Now, he has suddenly come out of the woodwork. Yeah. And he did like this very interesting speech to the Lowy Institute, kind mm-hmm. of on foreign espionage and yeah. where it has been, where it is today and where he sees it going. Yeah. And I felt a lot of this is really interesting. You can actually just look it up and you'll have the full transcript. You could even like listen to it, watch it. But basically he's suggesting that Chinese officials are increasingly feeding information to Australian Yeah, agencies. we've got the inside yes. skinny on them. Yes, and mostly doing it because I guess a few people are a bit upset that the head of China has decided that he can sit as the head of China in perpetuity. For as long as he wants. Yes. He's become an emperor. Right. Yes. Now, that's a really good point. And 
And there's a really good AFR article. I will uh, post it on our Twitter feed. At Ice Ice Podcast. podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Right. I will post it on there because it's fascinating because it's an interview with an AFR journalist Mm. who's taken Paul Simon to lunch. And of course- The wrong Paul Simon or the right Paul Simon? No, the right. Well, well, which is the right? Which is the wrong? See, that's the difficult thing. (laughs) It'd be great to have both of them at the table. I want both Paul Simons. I want- I do want the head of ASIS talking about intelligence and security but I also while love Paul music. Simon is strumming away. I know. I feel like it's a win-win. And Art Garfunkel is at another table going, why doesn't anyone talk to me? Because you have a stupid name, right? <laughs> you don't sound – there are no Garfunkels and in And also Paul Simon is the real – the real champion of that, uh, yeah. Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah, yeah, yeah anyway. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we keep getting distracted by music. I know. Uh, I think we should just end this with a bit of- Diamonds some- on the Solos. Of- yeah, yeah, finish with that. Or a mama. Yeah, no, that is Diamonds on the Solos. <laughs> Holes, oh God, I'm going to shut up. Right, go. let's get back to what we're talking about. Xi uh, Jinping. Yeah, terribly sorry, everybody. I get distracted easily. Um, yeah, it's ADD. Been busy, it's been a busy week. So, Xi right, Jinping. It's going to be an even busier week with an election at the end of Xi it. Xi Jinping. Right, okay. So, here's the interesting point that he makes, and it's a really clever one, is- it happens with autocratic governments all the time, right? Yes. And right now, we it is democracy versus autocracy at the moment. Yeah. It's gone from being communism versus capitalism. It is autocracy versus democracy. And the big problem with autocracy is people get overlooked, people get pushed aside. And those people that get overlooked and those people that get pushed aside get pissed off and decide that they're going to play for the other team. Yeah. Now, what is really interesting is he he's publicly said, yeah, we got ins with a whole bunch of people in China because that's got to make China go, whoa, 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 wait Well, I mean, and it made me think, like, how much of it is he bluffing? Like, do, is, is there really ins or is he just trying to, like, confuse them and make them chase their own tail for a bit? Really cool because I've got a quote here for you and I really like it because he sort of said, the journalist at this thing, and by the way, uh, Paul Simon likes a schnitty and a glass of Pinot Gris. I just love the fact that all the way through this article, the journalist yeah. kept saying he ordered a chicken schnitzel and a glass of Pinot Gris while I had a 200-gram sirloin steak and a glass of Shiraz. It's like Paul Simon is like party in the front and business in the back. Totally, you know? mate. I'll have a schnitty, but I'll have a really nice Pinot. Yeah, but come on. A Pinot with schnitty is good. and really? it, like, Pinot Gris There's is good. beer and a schnitty. Oh, not at lunch. Really? You, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you've, you've got enough bread with oh, the schnitty. Okay. You don't want the bready. Because really, beer is just bread with the yeast I feel infection. like it's heart disease on a plate no matter which way you spin yeah, exactly. it. Exactly. Anyway. But, you know, a nice Pinot Gris, it is, to me, that is the middle of the road white Xi wine. Jinping. Let's go back. Right. So, anyway, he's basically turned around when, you know, the journalist said, well, why are you suddenly doing this? Mm. And he said, no media profile is a problem. At the end of the day, I've got to attract talent. And if people don't know anything about us, that's a problem. Mm. How am I going to get the diversity of people I need? Diversity by gender, age, by colour, of skin, by religion, by sexual orientation. Nice one, Paul. Nice one. I'm really happy with that one. I absolutely need diversity in its broader sense to reflect the society we come from, but also use that diversity to build trust and confidence with the people we are dealing with. Yes. So basically he's turned around and said, I got to come out from behind the eight ball or from behind the sh- out of the shadows and go. This is who we are. Yep. Now he does mention the thing that we do have the word secret in our title, so there's only so far he can go. Well, I feel like he's kind of shed a lot. Well, we know he eats, he drinks pinagree, and that's not bad at all. But the really important thing about this, as he said, is if we don't know, if the Australian mm. public don't know what ASIS is all about, yeah they're going to run into a major problem because it means that the adversary, so say, you know, for want of another word, let's call a little country called China, turns around and goes, well, let's start spreading misinformation and disinformation about this. It puts them behind the eight ball. Yeah, because he did kind of paint a pretty bleak picture of the strategic outlook and he kind of said countries that are hostile to Australia, i.e. China, Mm -hmm. were not just engaging in spying but also, in his words, seeking to weaken our institutions and bend our values. Yes, because he also makes a really interesting point about how we kind of won and kind of lost with China. Yeah. Like economically, the WA budget came out and they made something like $30 billion. They're in a surplus, but let's not talk about the fact that they've got ramping in their hospitals and they don't spend any money on the state. And also they have iron ore. So anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or as our friend of the podcast, Matt Bevan, likes to say, buildy dirt. They're selling lots of lots buildy dirt. Lots of buildy dirt, dirt which it pretty much doesn't belong to them. It belongs to the whole of Australia. Anyway, don't get me started yeah, on yeah, WA yeah. market. But the whole thing is the amount of money they made back in 2006 from yep. China was about $350 million. Yep. Now we're in the billions and billions and billions, right? So the whole thing is we've won economically with China in a lot of ways, but our international relations with them, our relationship is really bad yeah. and we've lost the Pacific at the moment. Yes. We're losing the Pacific because of the Solomons. Now, the interesting thing he talked about as well is the sort 
sort of people they're looking for. And as soon as you sort of look at that, you go, ah, oh, now I get why every spy story from China winds up with a businessman in it. One of the things that he said that they're really looking to recruit is ex-executives from business. Right. Chinese. Well, no, Australian. Oh. Like, well, well, from anywhere, right? They, they like Trying the idea- Trying to lure them in. Well, not lure them in. Uh, as he said, a lot of people go into business, they become executives, they make a lot of money. Did you know that you can make quite a lot of money as an executive in a large business? Oh, yeah, I know, but like we don't have jobs like that. No, I don't. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Like, how do you get one of those jobs? And it's like being smart and good at your job. No, like- you know, so many times I think about going to the other side, like stop being a journalist, get a real job and earn some decent money. And then I go, no, I kind of like my job. Yeah, you know, I get to walk around in jail. But the basically, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that that's where your head went. That's all. Yeah, I get to I get to dress as a lumberjack if I feel like it. You are dressed like you're part of the Palmer United Party. But yes, anyway, my yellow flanny is putting everyone off. I didn't realize everyone. until I put it on. Anyway, so the whole thing is, and he mm. talks about this is you know, a lot of executives will turn around and go, I made a lot of money, but now I feel like doing something for the country. Well, not do a lot they? Of, no, not a lot. <laughs> I don't know. Not a lot of executives. <laughs> some. The whole idea is they're looking to recruit people with business experience yeah. because the whole fact these guys are used to making deals. And being a spy mm. is kind of somebody who makes a deal. You've got to make the other side, the person mm. you're trying to recruit as an agent, you yep. want them to be comfortable and confident in you and who better than that. But he also talks about the other kind of people they're looking for, in particular, tradies. Right. Yeah. Because people with practical knowledge are going to be very useful in the field. If they've got practical knowledge of electronics, electrical fit outs, just they need people that have like but, physical skills. But I just wish they wouldn't take tra- tradies because we're very short staffed on tradies. That yeah. Mean- and that just means we're going to wait longer to yeah. get plumbing. Excuse me, Asus. I am trying to actually get my kitchen <laughs> renovated. Would yeah. you mind? Can I borrow one of your offices? Also, I'm pretty sure tradies earn way more money than anyone else. So why would they do it? Yeah, well, because they've made enough money now. Like the executives, they've made enough money and they mm. want to do something for the country. That was, to sure. me, that was the one moment where I went, mm, I'm not really sure that. about that call. But here's the interesting, like, this is what I really like about it is his whole attitude towards this yep. is going public with what ASIS is trying to do and where ASIS is going is beneficial to the country. Popular thinking has always been that, oh, no, 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 mm. whatever you do, don't talk about it. I mean, that's why I talk about ASIO because I think people should know a little bit about what they're well, doing. But what's interesting to me is like, you know, when you had the head of ASIO give a similar kind of chat, media were all over it. Yeah. But this, we've got Paul Simon, head of ASIS. He does like this no holds barred discussion, which has never happened, and it didn't really make the media. Yeah. So what I want to know why are people more obsessed with ASIO and less concerned about ASIS? I think the interesting point is, and it's something that Paul Simons brings up in this interview. He turns around and he says that if anyone wanted to make a movie about ASIS, he'd mm. love to hear about it. But there are no real sort of big stories in ASIS's that we know of in ASIS's past, other than the Sheraton Hotel debacle, which we've discussed, where they yeah. had that raid that went. But you awry. know, he he starts his whole chat with the Lowy Institute, with telling you know a very interesting story about I think it was Afghanistan having mm-hmm. people in Afghanistan. Yeah, and you know it was kind of like one of those stories where you're like that could be a TV show. Yeah, but this, again, this is the thing: ASIS are so good at their job, yeah, that you we don't know, don't what, they know do. what they do, and yeah. we don't know we don't have those stories. But this is why I think it's very interesting that him kind of pulling back the curtain a little bit, so to speak, yep. did not gain the media attention that you would expect that it would. Whereas with ASIO, everyone wants to know. Everyone wants to know. Now, also, because ASIO is top of mind, we know about ASIO. People didn't even know ASIS existed until I think it was 1972 yeah. when somebody mentioned it in Parliament. Right. Before then, it was a secret. The fact yep. that it had secret in its title was absolutely apt because no one knew about it. And that is the thing about your clandestine yep. foreign intelligence gathering service as opposed to your domestic security intelligence service is ASIO has a high profile because it is active in yes. the community where ASIO this is active overseas. We don't talk about it. We don't know about it. He made a really good point about why we are now in the situation we are with China mm. is how because the Cold War ended and it ended, some would say, successfully for capitalism. Yeah. You know, the big communist demon of the Soviet Union collapsed and capitalism went, ha-ha, I am supreme, and it got cocky. We yeah. got cocky and we went, well, democracy, you know, capitalist democracies work better than communism. Ha-ha, we win. And then we forgot all about the fact that there was this 
other little communist little entity that is actually bigger than anybody else. And also nailing it on the capitalist front as yeah. well. I mean, considering America, you know, huge chunks of Europe owe China billions of dollars. See, this is the thing that I that people always forget. Is, oh, they're terribly communist. They're, they they're are not. a communist capitalist yes, autocracy. they are totally a communist capitalist autocracy. And it was a very smart thing that they did post Tiananmen Square is Deng Xiaoping who basically went, we need to fix it. We can't, we can't keep going the way of Mao. It's yep. not going to work. We've got to somehow get the money flowing and we've got to start dragging this huge chunk of our population that yep. live in abject poverty. We've got to create a middle class. Which so- is what they did and they've done it well. I mean, if, if they want to build something, it gets built in a second. Yeah. Because there is no red tape. They don't go through governments. No. Like, it's literally- like well, No, no, they, they do go through governments because that's where all the money goes. Like, literally- No, but I mean, like, there's no red tape. They don't- Like, if we wanted to build something in Australia, it would take a year to get approval. Mm-hmm. They don't have that. They can build it. I've been trying to get my kitchen renovated for two years now, and it's like we've only just jumped through the hoops oh, poor of getting the approval. Suburb. Poor eastern suburbs, Look, man. you have no idea how hard it is living <laughs> that close to the beach. Uh, um, but I, what I want to dig deeper into yep. is the espionage opportunities that they're seeing and what he said about how they're emerging from, you know, kind of this suppressed dissent within the authoritarian yeah, yeah, yeah. states. And what, what's very interesting is I, I listened to a very interesting tech podcast, Pivot, and they talk a lot about big Chinese companies companies being closed pretty much by China. Yeah. So you've got like a lot of rich men who are with these massive companies mm-hmm. and if they upset the Chinese government, then all of a sudden their companies start to crumble. Oh, my God. We've got a corruption charge on you uh, off to the re-education yes. camp and never come back. And by the way, we'll keep all that money. That's the interesting thing. You've got all of these like yep. the great thing is TikTok and WeChat. Yep. So there was an article the other day in the Sydney Morning Herald about how WeChat, there's a lot of misinformation about the Australian election on WeChat. Now, yeah. WeChat is a China or Sinocentric yeah. social media platform. Interestingly enough, they sort of said, no, 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 we don't do any political advertising and there's political advertising everywhere. Yeah. And when they go, oh, well, there's political advertising, well, we, don't, we don't know about that. There's yeah. a lot of, which is very, you know, Facebook yeah. and Twitter. Yeah. We don't do political advertising. We don't have misinformation. Uh, what about the UAP site? <laughs> What's that over there? We're going to call ourselves Meta now. Yeah. Right? So there is that. Now, the thing about about WeChat is it's a door that swings both ways. As much as the Chinese government can sort of start seeding the misinformation they'd like through that, because it is a social media platform, information can then be posted on there that counters it. Right. Does it happen? I'm not exactly sure. Again, WeChat's a really, really interesting example of, because I think, what's it called in China? It's called Weiying, I think. And it's heavily controlled by the, Ch- yeah, the Communist it Party. Is. Whereas WeChat, because it's out of the borders, but that gives them a way of furrowing out. Now, as you said, as Paul Simon said, uh, Hamama, no, (laughs) he said basically Paul Simon's thing was because of the nature of Xi Jinping's regime, there are disenfranchised and dissatisfied, disgruntled officials within the Chinese government Mm. that have now gone, hang on, I don't like this. I don't like the way this is going. And my best bet is to start seeding information out. Yeah. The fact that that's now been publicly acknowledged, that's a huge, huge moment. Absolutely. And I think that, as we said before, a part of it has to be because he's trying to catch China on the back foot. Like that would be something that they would intently look at. I mean, the nice thing about that is in doing that, as he said, we don't want people talking about what putting out information or misinformation about what we do because then we've got to try and counter that. Well, the nice thing that he's done is he's, basically done, let's have a nice old smash into the backcourt of the tennis court of intelligence. Let's say we've got guys in the government that are talking to us because they're pissed off. Yeah. That's going to make China go, whoa, 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 slow down a minute, what's going on? Yeah, right? exactly. The great thing about intelligence is it's called the great game. Right. Intelligence gathering is always referred to as the great game. It's like a jigsaw puzzle with Pictionary, chess, uh, mm. and three-card Monty, all rolled into one. You're all playing these games at one time, so you're watching all these different things occur around you. Mm. So the whole thing is a lot of the time what they're doing is promoting an idea of what's going on, but it's that whole idea of distraction, deflection, make the mark look the other way, and while they're looking over there, you're doing the little magic trick over here. Yes. Right, so what's interesting is for him to come out in public, so for Paul Simon to come out and say, I'm the ISIS chief and this is what's going on, it's a huge step 
to the country. It's massive. And I think we're going to see more of it because Mm. we're seeing a lot more transparency when it comes to what we have with ASIO. And we talked about that quite a bit. But I think what's nice is specifically with ASIS as well, we're seeing more transparency. And, you know, maybe he is trying to like boost his stocks. Like by talking about it, maybe more people might come out and want to work with ASIO. Well, that's that's one thing he says. The more people that know what we do, the more likely we are to attract the right people to work for us. But the other thing as well is transparency is a good thing. Mm. As long as it's the right thing that's transparent. As long as it's controlled. Right. Now, interestingly enough, one of the things that a journalist talks about in the interview is how when the AFR take you to lunch, they pay for the lunch, but you choose the restaurant, right? Right. So he picked a lovely little restaurant in Canberra where they went to, which is just around the corner from his office at Foreign Affairs in the Parliamentary yep. Triangle. But what was interesting was the journalist then found out that the other reason why it was that restaurant was because Paul Simon's security had already vetted the joint. So right. he was sitting in the right chair at the right table at the right time. Literally, it was so controlled. This guy is the head of an intelligence service. Yeah, right? so, it has so he to be. needs to know what's going on, which is very much like there was a little restaurant used to be called Timmy Kitchen okay. in Marnica in Canberra. Mm-hmm. And it was a really, really popular place for lunch because they served the best laksa you will ever eat. Now it's called Sammy Kitchen and it's in the city, but when it was Timmy Kitchen, it's a little oblong restaurant. You know, it's a box. Yep. And there was one table right in the back corner. There was the kitchen door, the side door, and the front door. Lots of exits. If you had that seat looking at the front door, you yep. could see every door. And it was a race to get that seat. And mainly, when you walked in there, it was mainly intelligence officers. Yep. You could see that. You'd see a guy you knew was an identified UK yep. intelligence officer talking to a guy in a terribly made East German suit. And you mm. go, okay, he's, these guys are having a bit of liaison or whatever. But what was interesting is I remember walking in one day, going in at 11.30, going, I'm going to get a Luxor, I'm going to get that chair. And I walked in and sat down in that chair and I was having lunch with a mate. So we're sitting there having – and every guy that walked in, it was when the, the Deputy Director happy. General of ASIO walked in, saw me in that chair and it was literally like he's looking at me going, get out of my chair. Because it's the power seat. You can right. see every entrance and exit in the room, right? And that's the thing. When my wife always says you, you never sit with your back to the door of, uh, in a restaurant. I have since overcome that. But when I first met her, <laughs> we'd go into a restaurant. I'd say, C- can we swap around? Yeah. And she's like, why? Just, and it was that weird thing. I had to sit looking at the door. So I love that little factoid that they put in there going, the entire restaurant had been vetted. Which makes complete sense. Of course it does. I mean, this is – and also what they were discussing, he's an intelligence chief sitting with a journalist mm. in a restaurant, there are going to be questions that come up where he'll go, I'm not going to answer that, or even better, I can answer that, but you can't print it. Right. And now I very much would doubt that he would discuss anything of national security interest. No. Or of dangerous national security interest. I mean, the fact that he's talking about how we have access to Chinese officials who are disgruntled and giving us information, that's a huge deal. Yeah. Particularly if we're doing it and no one else is getting the same skinny. I mean, that's the really important point. Yeah. So I guess we're probably going to see more and more of this. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, ONA have come out of the woodwork. We see a lot of the head of ONA. We see a lot of Burjo. Mm. We love him. Burjo, we'd like to have you on one day, yeah. um, straight after your threat Burjo. assessment or annual report. And look, I would love to talk to Paul Simons as well. Either one would be fine. Okay, They'll, I'll work on it. Yeah, I don't know. I'll call the, him up. I don't know if the Muso really has a lot to do with intelligence, I know. <laughs> but what the hell? He's probably got some great stories about being on the road. So, going back to where we started was yes, Gladys Liu. Leo. Here's the really important thing is, yeah, would the Chinese like to get someone in the Australian Parliament? Hell to the year, all right? And there is evidence that they've been attempting it. I mean, it came out of course. just before the election where ASIO had said that the Chinese government are trying to get yes. people into the into parliament. Here's the interesting thing. Nick Zhao was in his, I think, mid-30s? Mm. Young guy, right? Very young for a politician. Now, interestingly enough, as someone said, even with a million bucks, yep. right, You come to the, and you come to the party and go, I've got a million bucks and I want to be a member, I want to run for parliament. Even if you get into parliament, it's a long time before you're in a position of I know. influence. I mean, But to, to be fair, the Chinese like to play the long game. It's not like they're in a rush for That's anything. the point, right? So someone like Gladys Liu, who unfortunately, she doesn't have a good reputation as a member anyway. No. Right, she's, she's not well liked in the electorate and chances are she's probably going to get bounced in the election. But the interesting thing about that is she's in the party system, right? Now, if she was an agent of influence- uh, yeah, there mm. would be there would be a lot of worry about yeah. this. But you know, if I had Andrew Hasty come out and say, "Don't be stupid," and he's on the security committee, but 
the whole thing is with Gladys Liu, the big problem was she's tainted because yeah. there's all of these associations that have been brought up. As much as, you know, when the Labor Party brought it up and the Prime Minister turned around and said, oh, that's a dirty smear. Well, yeah, duh, we get that. It's an election. These things are going to happen. But also, he's not going to turn around and go, oh, yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, exactly. I know I've, got an, I've only got a majority of one seat, so but I'll get rid of her. That's the other thing is the politicking that was been going on yes. in this last term. Essentially, with Gladys Liu, if she was an intelligence asset- I really don't think she was. No, and she wouldn't be getting anything. She wouldn't be getting. She would be getting hands on anything really tight. She'd be watched like a hawk by. Yes, because I, I would imagine right. like if Labor's pulled this up and like people have spoken about it, then pretty sure that ASIO is across it. Oh look, well as as Burjo said way back in 2019. Mm. Yeah, we know about it. No problems. We're on it, right? Yep. Nick Zhao, Gladys Liu. Now the other thing is it's very difficult to investigate mm. a sitting parliamentarian. Yeah, but you know, look. Bottom line is China. Ooh, we seem to be like uh, I know. I'd like to say uh, I think we just scored a point. I- I'd like to think that we're not we're holding our own against. I know, but I will say this one thing: yep. how much of this is kickback for the Solomons? I do feel like we're kind of playing a game here. Oh, 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 yeah, definitely, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I would certainly say that they've gone. Okay, how do we? How can we rock their boat? Yeah, yeah, they exactly. Have, they have not just rocked our boat; they've rocked the wharf. It's and, just interesting timing. And the house that the wharf is attached to is sliding into the sea. So, yeah, I think that's also climate change. Yeah, well, yeah. You know, whose fault is that? Yeah. Uh, ours. <laughs> Everybody's. Yeah. How long do we have? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't think we have much more time because I think that, okay. that's it, isn't Let's it? Let's wrap it up. Okay. Okay, bye. Um, yes, I am.